Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. Due to YouTube's changing quote-unquote community standards, I created a channel called Grumpy Old Fart over on Rumble, a free speech alternative to YouTube. You can see all of my stuff over there, including my political and social commentary, as well as my current events videos. The links to my YouTube and Rumble channels, as, as well as links to let you order my books, are in the description of this video. If you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. Now, on with the video. Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing a historic haunting video on the Edinburgh Vaults. Edinburgh, Scotland there, uh, is the, the city. The Edinburgh Vaults are also called the South Bridge Underground Vaults. The next time you find yourself in Edinburgh, Scotland, the tour would not be a waste of time. It's it's a historic landmark. It's, it's a tourist attraction, even without the hauntings. <laughs> The vaults are a vast, man-made catacombs where the working class once worked and lived. Over time, rain seeped into the caverns, spreading diseases like cholera and consumption. Decades of brothels, alcohol trafficking, and murders have culminated in a truly haunted place. If there was a place for ghosts to congregate, this is it. Okay, it's, it's like, the, like the Paris, the, the catacombs under Paris, that kind of thing. It's basically the same concept. 40,000 years of geological activity and glacial movement have created a natural defensive position. A huge rock with three steep cliffs and a long sloping hill to the top. Local people have used this as a defensive outpost for almost 3,000 years. <clears throat> a fortress was built sometime between 1058 and 1093. Big stone fortress. Bridges were built to connect the high points of the old town of Edinburgh because it's, it's a very hilly region. The longest of the two, the South Bridge, had 19 arches supporting the road over the Cowgate Ravine. Tenement buildings were constructed on either side of the bridges, enclosing the arches and forming the Edinburgh Vaults. By the mid-1800s, the vaults were being used as workshops. When the rains caused the diseases to spread, illness and death, the city council moved all the legal residents out. This meant that the caverns became a haven for the poor, the underbelly of Edinburgh. During the Irish potato famine of 1845 to 1847, destitute Irish settled into the vaults. Prostitution, whiskey distilling, gambling, fighting and murders were all commonplace. <clears throat> By the early 20th century, the vaults were sealed off. Excuse me. In the 1980s, the vaults were rediscovered and they started doing tours down there. Uh, when the vaults were open to tourism, it wasn't long before strange things began to occur. Now we get into the haunted stuff. That was a quick history. Now comes the hauntings. Multiple mediums located and identified the exact same ghost. And there's a hell of a lot more than one. There's more than a dozen. People feel uncomfortable in these places. They hear all manner of strange things like you know, footsteps, moans, disembodied voices, even bloodthirsty shrieks. Children's laughter is also prevalent throughout the vaults. Multiple ghosts have been reported and not all of them human. Many birds have been seen and they're not normal birds. They're, they're, they're ghostly apparitions. Also, the ghost of a shaggy dog has been known to plop itself down at a visitor's feet. Uh, yeah, they're animal ghosts. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jack is the ghost of a little boy in 18th century garb. Many other ghost children have been reported as well, but Jack is the one that's most prevalent. However, the most notorious presence in the vaults is a dark figure in knee-high boots, rough trousers, and the trousers are stuffed into the boots, and he wears dirty ruffled white shirts. He's a dirty ruffled white shirt. He's called Mr. Boots because of those boots. Mr. Boots is unkempt and unshaven and has very bad breath. People have smelled it. He seems to feed off of the energy of groups, like the tourist, like the tour groups that go through the, the vaults. Mr. Boots does not like groups being there. Sometimes 
He douses all of the lights and candles, leaving everyone in total darkness. Mr. Boots occupies one specific room. He shares it with the ghost of a girl that is said the ghost of the girl that he murdered. Tour guides always warn groups about Mr. Boots just to be on the safe side. Uh, if you're going to go into a, an area like that, I guess it's better to go with a little bit of forewarning. Tour guides also warn, uh, they, like I said, tour groups warn uh, groups about Mr. Boots. When Mr. Boots is really angry, he can be heard stomping along the various corridors, and many, many people have seen him. That's how we know what he looks like. Considering that there's no way to know exactly how many deaths occurred in the vaults, and it's likely that many more than 100 people died there, more than 100 murders occurred there, chances are that Mr. Boots has a hell of a lot of company, and... I, I would I would love to visit that just for the haunted aspect, but I'm a history buff as well, so you know I guess those two go hand in hand. You, you can't go to a historical spot without a chance of running into a ghost. And since I enjoy the paranormal as well, you know it kind of goes hand in hand. So if you get a chance, check out the Edinburgh vaults. If you get the opportunity to go to Scotland and see go to Edinburgh, take a tour. The worst thing that'll happen is Mr. Boots uh, turns the lights out. <laughs> you folks have a good day now. God bless one and all. Clarissa Lowe, a historian from the future. Delmore Kane, a Civil War veteran turned outlaw. This oddball pairing faces a conspiracy of epic proportions spanning the centuries. If you like action and adventure westerns with a splash of science fiction and fantasy, check out my book series Drifters and their ongoing adventures.